I'm based here at the Institute of Development Studies, IDS, uh, the University of Sussex, and we're looking at the circular economy from the development studies context or angle. And that, that means uh, several things. Uh, first of all, maybe we're interested very much in what the circular economy looks like in the so-called global, global south in, in developing countries. Um, and we've started this work uh, um, last year, for example, with a large conference we organized here at IDS, um, where we explored the links between circular economy, sustainable livelihoods and lifestyles. And the SDGs were, um, they were agreed in 2015 by all countries by, uh, in the, at the UN. Um, and so there's uh, 17 of these goals with um, a subset of 169 targets. And they cover um, all the three dimensions, social, economic, and environment. And there's, the timeline is up to 2030. And so now um, there's big momentum in, among governments, but also among big businesses, um, NGOs, uh, using the SDGs as, as a framework to um, understand what they are doing and um, which boxes they can tick, how it links to the work they have done, to identify blind spots, um, maybe some of the work they're doing which might not link directly to SDGs or what else they could do. And um, so what I've done, uh, trying to look at the circular economy also through the SDG lens to see what can the circular economy and, and the various practices of the circular economy do to achieve the SDGs? And so what I found out um, that the SDG, uh, that the circular economy, are very important to make contributions to a number of the environmental targets. For example, life, life on land, uh, life below water, also sustainable consumption and production. Um, and also it's important for a number of the economic SDGs for example, um, sustainable economic growth, um, clean industrialization, these parts. So the circular economy is highly relevant for these goals and, and the various targets under, underneath there. However, we also um, found out that the circular economy probably doesn't deliver yet on a number of the social SDGs, for example, inequality or um, gender issues. So these are some of the gaps in the current circular economy practices as well as in the in the discourse and and this has also been identified um, uh, for example by a recent literature review looking at over 600 academic papers which have been published on the circular economy and only a handful of them uh, really went into the details on the social issue so um, for the this Diff session on people in the circular economy uh, this year is, is very relevant. Yeah, um, there, there, there's been a recent uh, research by NASA that has been resurfaced uh, with the IPCC report in last uh, September, and that NASA-funded research was ex it's hand, it's called the Handy model. Um, has found out and has confirmed that there might be collapse of the systems and the human systems for two two main reasons: uh, social inequalities and uh, resource mismanagement. So we address resource mismanagement in circular economy. So circular economy is a tool to uh, get us to the safe space for humanity. What might be missing in circular businesses and uh, way to approach circular economy might be the sense of making sure this next model, this next economic model, which is considered by many uh, to, be, to, be, to be the next one, uh, what's missing is to ensure that it's, it embeds inequality uh, among its principles. Well, uh, circular economy, res the resource mismanagement is uh, the core of uh, how we could create a, a collaborative and distributed world, you know, a networked economy. But in the, the sense of the distributive approach should include uh, social relations and uh, uh, the relation between all kinds of people so that 
that that distributive means uh, renewable energy are accessible to anyone it doesn't have to be centralized as we we do manage energy today so how can we also look at uh, distributive nature of social relations and and the human interactions between themselves so that we make sure that those services and that distributed uh, economy uh, grants access to the miss the people that are not embedded in our economic system yet remember that Economy is just a tool. Uh, economy is just a tool to make sure that we create well-being for humans on this planet. So, how how can the circular economy, as it's as it's developing now, contribute to um, achieving these goals? Um, so, these are in a way this is the missing social dimension of the circular economy, and uh, we think it's um, you bring this together with the human development framework, which is a well-established approach. That, that's been tested and is being used um, together with the circular economy as now the main emerging model for, on the one hand, business innovation, but also in terms of a new possible sustainability paradigm. So uh, I think that, that could be a very powerful uh, um, framework. Uh, it's the three main indicators among the Human Development Index. Uh, which was developed uh, by Amartya Sen and uh, Mr. Uh, El Hajj, and 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 these three indicators uh, have since uh, for the past decades uh, they've tried to explain and to show another way of uh, create measuring well-being away from just GDP as a, as an indicator. So uh, taking into account uh, yeah, life expectancy at birth, uh, educational attainments, means of years uh, of schooling and, and per capita GNI. So the, the idea here is to, to move the debate from uh, an economic centric uh, way of measuring uh, progress into a, a human development index based on these three, uh, three indicators. For uh, informal waste picking, for example, which is prevalent in, in most developing countries. Um, there are millions of people who are actually already doing circular economy work. However, um, they're often, in most cases, marginalized, uh, working in very poor conditions. And so these are opportunities for the within the circular economy to address these social issues of, of discrimination and inequality very, on a practical level. How do we reinforce uh, the macroeconomic uh, policy framework uh, from the outer uh, outer circle. So here we are. We recognize that the, the economy should be distributive, uh, renewable energy, and all these elements should be accessed to to all human beings uh, within within a planet or within a country. So the, the the outer loop is the distributive approach of the economy. Uh, the next loop is the uh, on top of being circular, our business model should be inclusive. The next uh, loop uh, within it uh, is about reinforcing communities. So we here we are here about building resilient economy, uh, resilient communities. Sorry, and all these loops will lead to uh, individual well-being uh, according to uh, the human development objectives, uh, i.e., uh, cascading and self-reinforcing loops to strengthen capabilities and, and choices. From a biomimicry point of view, we learn that every element uh, and every living beings in nature, uh, in natural ecosystems, uh, have a function to play or a role. Uh, and, and all these elements and living beings in nature, in natural ecosystems, they self-reinforce each other to maintain that ecosystem and to maintain life. And uh, from that principles, uh, when you look at, uh, I mean, circular economy, we look at, uh, at the world from two dimensions. We look at the world from a stock management perspective, and we look at the world from a flow of energies perspective. And we need to grasp both, and we need to maintain quantity and quality of both so that we maintain life on Earth. And that's what we learn with circular economy. But if you apply this circular thinking, uh, I personally see a, a third stock, a stock of humans. And, and when I look at the biosphere stock, I see a disappearing stock that we've been destroying so far. And we need to change our, 
our way of behaving towards that stock. And when I see, look at the technical stock, I see a stock that needs to be maintained and valued, which is, which is not what we've done so far. The only dynamic stock uh, that I see on our beautiful planet is the human stock. We are growing. We are moving from 7.5 billion to 10 plus billion people. So if we look at the, if we, it's a matter of perspective, but if we turn the question around, is it scary or can we take advantage of that stock in new innovative way? I'm not saying we need to go back to the old good days. I'm saying, can we look at the stock of human as a dynamic, abundant stock of resources that could help us rebuild the biosphere?